I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play around with the sandwich bag method for dyeing some yarn. We are going to be adding yarn and dye into a bag, then adding water, acid, and squishing everything up to see what kind of colorway we create. Today we will be dyeing 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I do have an affiliate link down in the video description. Today we are going to be dyeing with two different colors of Dharma Acid Dye, Hyacinth and Sage Leaf. Now the colors that we have on the yarn will be placed in separate areas, but they will also blend as we squish things together. And so I have a feeling that we will end up with something very, very pretty. Sage leaf definitely breaks and can sometimes lean a little bit blue and hyacinth is a fairly bluish purple. So I think that even if they mix completely, we will still end up with something really, really beautiful. Yeah, we will eventually end up combining everything in this gallon size Ziploc bag. Uh, this one isn't Ziploc brand, so like press lock? I don't know what you call these without the brand name. Uh, but we will be putting them inside this gallon storage bag and it's a lot of fun. It's, it adds a lot of randomness to it. And I decided rather than pre-soaking the yarn, we would start with it dry as we add it to the bag. So it's gonna just be dry and uh, I will be putting on my respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves once we start using the dry dye powder. But we'll take some powder, add it to spaces, sort of move the powder around on the dry yarn a little bit before we add the liquid. So I'm excited to see where we end up here. Okay, and here we go. Let's start with the sage leaf. This color, oh, look at it. You can see all the different colors in there. This color definitely does break. Uh, sometimes if I mix it in a stock, the color changes by the time I get down to the bottom. But I am coming and sticking my hand like deep in the bag, just sort of sprinkling it on. And I'm even gonna move the yarn a bit. Cause we want, I want some coverage. So we're just adding some good amounts of this dye on and I can even wipe my gloves <laughs> uh, onto the dry yarn to remove some of the dye. I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful when I'm dealing with the hyacinth so we don't contaminate that bottle. Uh, but now let me go rinse off my glove. So if you look at the dry dye through the bag it does almost look like a glaze or speckles and really really cool. However the yarn is not dyed yet. You do need water and acid to dye yarn with acid dyes. So that's why that's just like the beginning step of this project. Now let's add in our hyacinth. I'm going to start adding some, this color is a gorgeous color. Uh, it's one that I hadn't used much and I started using more often and I am a bit obsessed with it. So I am trying to not touch things too much, but now I grabbed another pinch and I will not be going back in the bag again. Um, I grabbed another pinch to just apply a little bit of color in another portion of the bag, but now I'm going to go wash my glove and we'll get ready to add water. Okay, once we have things like closed up well, then I will take my mask back off, but for now I'm going to have it on. I have here 500 milliliters of just plain water and we will add acid eventually, but I thought it would be fun to just start with some water and see where we go. So I added about half of it and now I'm going to close up the bag and try to remove as much of the air as possible and hopefully this water on the counter <laughs> was not a leak. Uh, so we will hope that. But actually, to help us with this. Okay, I placed the bag in a catering steam pan because in the off chance that we pop the bag or something as I try to remove even more air from it, uh, 
because the more air, the less air we have, the easier it'll be to squish. Uh, yeah, we, we just don't want, if we pop it, then we won't spill dye all over the floor. But now we can squish. And so, yes, I see a lot of green right now. But hyacinth is a funny color. And cold with no acid, it disappears. Uh, and this is something that I learned over the course of filming another video. And I kept adding more and more and more of the hyacinth. And I totally forgot that how much it disappeared. I kept adding more and it didn't really start showing up until I added acid. Uh, and then when I added heat, heat, it really, really showed up. I just added, eh, I'll add the rest of the water. And then again, we are going to try to remove as much air as possible, or actually, with the top of it up, I can squish this a bit um, because it won't pop. But it looks like we've got pretty good coverage of the color already in here. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna add some acid. We've only used 500 milliliters of water, but let's add, let's go ahead and add two tablespoons of white vinegar. And then we will squish this as well to work the acid through. I'm gonna close it most of the way and squish. Okay. And for now, I would say we have something that looks green with a few hints of blue. Not very dramatic, but I am seeing over time more and more of those purple notes sort of come out into the yarn. So I'm curious what this may look like after say 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set this aside and then we'll take another peek at it in a little while. After just 20 minutes, whoa! Okay, this is gonna be so cool. But after just 20 minutes, I see a lot more of the purple coming through. But when I lifted it up, guys, we got speckles. We got some blue speckles um, from that sage leaf. Those blues were slow to, to strike. Oh my goodness. Well, that was super unexpected. <laughs> So the color sage leaf is a tricky color and I've definitely observed over the years when I have used it in a dye stock that the very end, the dregs, whatever is left, will be a lot more blue than what I'm using first. Um, and so some of these blue, blue pigments absorb a lot slower, or dissolve slower or something. And boy, is that what we see here uh, because of the way that they showed up. That is wild. I'm not sure if how much of these are gonna spread out or what, or if they're just like on the bottom there, or if we'll find some more of that throughout the entire yarn. But we definitely see some more purple right now. And so, actually, I think that what I wanna do is go ahead and steam set this yarn now. I could leave it to sit overnight, but we are gonna go put this in a steamer basket right now. So I am gonna add the yarn with those bluish speckles. I'm gonna put those maybe on top so I can see it. But I am gonna open the bag a bit so that way it doesn't like fill up too much. Um, otherwise, there's a relationship between temperature and volume of air. And so it's good to just have a crack there so that way the bag doesn't expand too much. And that is not the correct lid. And so I'm gonna pop the lid on and now we're gonna steam set this for 30 minutes. However, with this technique, you could let the yarn sit for a couple of days outside and then remove it and steam set it later on. But we're gonna just steam directly in the bag to see if we can preserve some of those speckles. Okay, the time is up and we have another surprise. Do you see, do you see? We now have some yellow speckles. Some horrid speckles that have shown up. Sage leaf is such a funny color. <laughs> it's such a funny color. I am so curious to see what this yarn is really gonna look like. But anyway, I'm gonna set it aside to cool completely so then we can wash it and finally look at the colorway. 
Let's wash our sandwich bag yarn. I think the speckles are so wild. I'm adding the entire plastic bag here because I'd like to rinse out the bag as well, but oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, let's rinse out the bag because this way we'll be able to reuse it for another dyeing project as long as I don't get a hole in it, which I think I did uh, one time. But yeah, I'm gonna set the bag aside to dry and let's take a look at the yarn. Okay, here's that zip tie which is always handy for making sure we don't, ooh, we've got a little bit of white. It's like a pastel kind of grayish color. This, these speckles are so fun. This is soft, but variegated and pretty. I love, love, love this technique and I can't wait to lay out the finished yarn. I am also incredibly grateful as I add a little bit of soap for all of the Chemnitz fans who joined me on the live stream where I was actually working on episodes of Dye Pot Weekly and the people who are watching that stream actually picked this color combination. And so that was a lot of fun. And this is a big reason why you should make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. Now there may be a little bit of something but not really, that's in the water. But I'm gonna give another rinse anyway. Ooh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot more pastel. It was hard to know how much of that was there. I really did try to add dye all over the yarn, and we successfully got really nice coverage of this colorway, which is remarkably soft overall. So let's see. All right, that's looking pretty clear to me. I'm gonna finish rinsing out all the soap and then I'm gonna put this yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a closer look and see if we can find all those speckles. This yarn is stunning. And what's interesting is that the colors are a lot more soft and less saturated than I think I was expecting looking at it from the bag. Like I'm feeling a lot more pastel areas than what I was aware of during the filming and even washing process. But that's not a bad thing. I think my favorite thing from this skein today is the way that the sage leaf broke and we saw these blue and golden speckles show up later on. This is something that really happened because we had the dry dye powder in the bag when we're smushing things around and then just letting it sit. And so those colors that dissolve a little bit later in the process then had a chance to sit and then start to strike where they were located in the bag. And it's so fun. Like I love doing things where it's random. You don't exactly know how the colorway is gonna turn out until you've finished it. And it's just so, so fun. I have a Patreon and one of the perks I offer every month for some of the levels is a behind the scenes live stream while I am filming a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And during these live streams, the patrons who are present will give some feedback and sometimes shape the direction of the video from a different way than I intended in advance. Now this particular scheme I filmed during a public live stream where I did a huge mega behind the scenes live stream working on multiple different episodes of Dye Pot Weekly to sort of give a look and feel at that perk I offer patrons but also um, so that way I could hang out. And so you really want to make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss any videos or live streams because sometimes I schedule things in advance and other times I decide, hey, let's do a dying stream today and have a lot of fun. And so if you don't want to miss it, having notifications on is the best way to be notified. But also if you would like access to more behind the scenes live streams like that one I shared. The particular live stream I'm referencing today was three and a half hours long. Usually I try to keep the behind the scenes live streams for patrons 
around 20 to 30 minutes so that way it would be easier for people to watch the replay <laughs> so they aren't exactly three hours long uh, but you can learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon at patreon.com slash Chemnitz and I will have a link down in the video description but yeah another huge thank you to everyone who was watching the stream and picked sage leaf and hyacinth I certainly would have combined these colors with a variegated colorway, but I don't know if I would have thought to combine them with this kind of technique because I wasn't sure how they would mix or blend together. And the results here are phenomenal. I think originally I planned to let the yarn sit overnight in the Ziploc bag and I wasn't planning on steam setting it right away. But as soon as I saw those speckles, I knew I wanted to try to capture it before I moved things too much and potentially spread out those colors more. And I think we got this variegated yarn with some super subtle, soft speckles. I definitely don't think I would have been able to create this on purpose, and I think it is brilliant. Of course, trying to replicate it uh, would be a little bit challenging because I did not measure the various amount of colors that I used. Uh, maybe I measured the amount of acid that I eventually added in, but I don't even remember. Certainly, when I go back and I'm editing the video, I write down um, all of the details I use with like vinegar and things like that as much as I can. So that way it would be easier for me to replicate at least the technique, if not the colorway in the future. And so there is a lot of handy information down in the video description. And so it's always worth checking out if you want to learn more about not just the tools and equipment that I use in my videos, but further down where I have like the video contents listed, I do have details there about the amount of vinegar I used and the exact colors that I used in the process as a I guess lab notebook <laughs> to keep track of my projects to make it easier if you would like to try to replicate my results at home. I'm now trying to think if there would be easy ways to scale this up so that way you could do three or four skeins at a time. And it would be a little bit hard in the bag to do that. But one thing I think that maybe you could do is put a bunch of dry yarn in a steam pan or some kind of physical container, apply dry dye around on it so you get some amount of coverage to start with, and then add probably 200 grams or 300 grams of yarn into the Ziploc bag, and then add the water and vinegar. And at that point, you could maybe add a little bit more dye so you have dye around the edges of the bag before you start squishing. Uh, that is I think where I would go. Because I think that if we had a lot of yarn in a steam pan and started squishing that way without the plastic bag, you would lose some of the randomness. But I don't know. Um, certainly, I guess we could try something like that and do a side-by-side -side in a plastic bag, not in a plastic bag. Are the colorways similar or not? And that's not a bad idea, because if I want to try to do more than one skein like this, uh, yeah, I should really try it. And maybe I should try it with these two colors again. Is that something you'd like to see? Let me know down in the comments below. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.